Hello everyone and welcome to a Hammer Tiger video. So we haven't had a video up of this tank yet, I wanted to get one out. You may be confused as to why I have it in my garage. The reason is I have bought it on PlayStation. I've not bought it on Xbox, I'm going to grind it out on Xbox. But on PlayStation I decided to buy it, uh, mostly for the channel really. I bought the package with the Kunern and Jagdpanzer so I can get you guys some content in that and some hammer content as well. So a couple of things we're going to do today, we're going to really quickly go over the ops, we're going to really quickly go over the stats comparing the Tiger and the Hammer, and then we're going to look at some gameplay that I've got for you guys. We'll kind of try and keep it nice and short and sweet. So here is the Hammer, that's what it looks like. You've probably seen a few knocking around in games already if you've been playing the last few days. Uh, I can't say I'm particularly blown away with the paint job. I don't really like it, it's not that great, but it's not horribly offensive. I prefer it to the Motherland one, I think, so maybe, <laughs> I don't know. It's alright, but um, but it's cool. It's a Tiger, which suits me fine, because I just finished recently-ish grinding out my regular Tiger on PS4 and 3 marking that, so I'm very used to Tiger gameplay, and they are very similar vehicles. We'll just actually look at the stats real quick first, actually, before we jump into the ops. So, um, they're... They're pretty much the same really, there's very few differences. I went through and tried to dig out all the differences I could by comparing the stats that I could uh, pull out of the stats pages here. So, because handily I have them both in my garage. So if I pull up the details here, we can look and see this is the Tiger Hammer. And you can see over on the right there, one of the main differences is hit points. The Tiger Hammer gets 1550 hit points, that's an extra 50 on top of the Tiger. See the Tiger gets 1500. Not a huge difference, but every little helps, you know. The uh, the hammer also has less, much less uh, horsepower than the than the tiger. That's the fully upgraded tiger, by the way, that we're comparing to here. So we have 700 horsepower on the tiger hammer, and we have 870 on the tiger one. So your tiger hammer is going to be a little bit slower than your, well, noticeably slower than your normal tiger one, but with a few more hit points. The other difference on this screen that you'll notice is the uh, the turret rotation, the turret traverse speed, you might be more familiar with that called, it's how quickly your turret can turn. It is slightly slower on the Tiger Hammer, it's 20 degrees a second, 23 degrees on the fully upgraded Tiger 1. So small difference, but again, noticeable. All the other stuff on here, the same view range, the same, rate of fire is the same, the ammo is all the same, the armor is all the same, etc, etc. There is one other difference that I managed to dig out by going into the package view. So this is the view of the long ATA on the Tiger 1. And if you look at the gun stats there, we've got an accuracy of 0.34. And if we jump over to the Tiger Hammer and go to packages, you notice we have an accuracy of 0.33. So there is a slight difference, a very, very slight difference. A tiny bit of uh, increased accuracy in the in the Tiger Hammer, but I'm not sure you're going to notice that one too much. Um, they do actually, the only difference in packages, I think, is the uh, the engine is slightly different. You've got the uh, well, Maybach HL230P30 there, and I think it's a different one uh, to give it the Ego. Oh, uh, yeah, so slightly different Maybach engine in the Tiger, and hence the horsepower difference. So there you go, that's the uh, the difference stats-wise in these two tanks. They both have normal matchmaking, there's no like pref matchmaking. God, that would be OP as hell on the, uh, on the Tiger Hammer. So that's about that. So now looking very quickly at the ops themselves, I'm going to bring up on screen hopefully a picture of a awesome little cheat sheet made by uh, Slayer28. He's one of the club wargaming guys, does some really cool artwork for for water tanks console he's throwing together this great little cheat sheet that sums up quite nicely so there are what, one two three four there are five parts to this op a little bit like the previous tanks we've unlocked there are the ops gradually release over time and you have to beat each one so we've already had the 16th of august if you see there that was when the first op was, was released the 19th which is today is the second op then the 22nd the 26th and the 29th are when the third fourth and fifth ops will go live so the earliest you can unlock the tiger hammer without buying it is going to be the 29th of august if you can beat that final op on that day you could leave all of the ops and do all of them on the 29th of august if you want it doesn't matter it's not the first one won't expire until the end of the whole event so you don't need to worry about that now how these ops work is a little bit different to before 
you have to accumulate points and the way you accumulate points is by if you win a battle then you get plus one point if you lose a battle then you get minus one point and if in the battle whether you lose or win if you're in the top five xp earners on your team for base xp then you get plus one point as well keep in mind that a, a draw counts as a loss so for an example basically if you go into game you have a beast game your team wins and you're like third in the leaderboards then you'll get plus two points for that to your little total and you can check that on the op screen it will say like two out of five points or whatever if you then go and play another game and say your team loses but you still come in the top five xp on your team then you'll lose a point for losing the battle, but you'll still gain one for the top five XP. So you'll actually just stay the same. You won't go up or down in your total points. You'll stay at two. If you manage to win a game, but you come bottom of the leaderboards, you'll still get plus one point because you will have been on the winning team. So that's how that works. It's interesting. I like it. It's um, It throws yourselves at the mercy of uh, the matchmaking gods as to whether you'll get on winning teams or not. But there's ways you can help that by platooning up with your friends and really trying to get those wins, uh, maybe playing some lower tier tanks, that kind of thing, whatever uh, whatever you think is going to suit you best. So the total points you need on the 16th, it's, you've got to get five points for that op. The second op is five points again, another five points. The third op is 10 points. The fourth op is 10 points. And the last op is 15 points. So the 15 one's going to be a little bit tough. You've only got a couple of days in which to do that. But hopefully most of you guys will manage that. Right, so let's have a little look at gameplay. Sorry if you already understood the ops, but it was nice to uh, cover that real quick just for anyone who did not. Right, so here we go with some gameplay in the Tiger Hammer. Now, it's a bit of a strange one because I, I, I haven't played too many games in this yet, so I haven't got a crazy replay for you guys yet. But, um, but it's a fairly decent one. It's a fairly respectable amount of base XP in this game. It's also bottom tier as well, which I liked. It's a tier 9 game, and we're tier 7. And we don't have to resort to uh, to spamming out premium rounds as well. So um, so it's the best of the bunch to bring you so far. Yeah, a bit of a strange one. Because I've just finished grinding out the Tiger on PS4, I've already put up quite a lot of really good Tiger replays pretty recently. Um, so really, you guys can go, if you're unfamiliar with the Tiger, which is probably not that likely because it's um, a pretty well-known tank, then you can go and check out some of those Tiger replays. Like I said, it is very similar, but... Here we go, this is some actual Tiger Hammer gameplay. And we're on red here. And we're going to move to the middle and be a little bit snipey and conservative because we are bottom tier. And we're in a Tiger and we don't really want to get hit too much. So one of the other cool things, I mean, the, the package I bought to get the Hammer and the Kunern and Jagdpanzer was very expensive. But there were a couple of nice little perks with that. Um, one of which is that if you purchase the Tiger Hammer early, then you get an infinitely repeatable times two crew XP op until the end of the event, only on the Tiger Hammer. So every game I play in my Tiger Hammer, I will get double crew XP until the 31st of August, which is awesome. Another really cool thing is that it uh, has this other op you get called Drop the Hammer, which is another infinitely repeatable op until the end of the event. And every time with that op, it's always active as well. These are like special ops that are always active. They don't count to your three max you can have. So you get loads of ops turned on. And this drop the hammer op, uh, every time you win in the Tiger Hammer, you get randomly receive one of the following rewards. Either 2,000 silver, a small first aid kit, a large first aid kit, times five crew XP, a small or a large repair kit, times three... XP or one day of premium so really really cool some good stuff on offer there um, and I've actually been keeping track I've only played I guess a few games so far but I've been keeping track of what I've, um, what I've been getting uh, and I got a few good things so far if I can um, actually dig out the right window on my computer there we go um, so I've only done a few so far but I got the 2000 silver once I've got three large repair kits I've got times three XP twice and I've got a couple of large med kits as well so um, so that's pretty cool. I'm planning on playing this tank a hell of a lot up until the end of the month and grinding up my um, Rupert Assman, my main crew on PS4. 
on my uh, who's currently on my Tiger 2 he's going to end up on my E75 and then E100 so I'm going to grind up that crew like mad and maybe grind up one or two new crews as well and in that process I'll also hopefully get loads of the bonuses from that that times five crew one really is the uh, the big one I'm after uh, but times three experience and days of premium also very very cool so that's a nice little incentive to play the uh, play the hammer and it's just a very enjoyable tank to play like I said I've been uh, been playing the tiger a lot recently I three marked that recently so I'm very comfortable in my tiger zone right now anyway so let's look back at the battle at hand so the the tiger if you're not too familiar with playing it recently it's it's not hugely well armored um it's it's very capable of bouncing shots when it's angled if people hit you on the tougher parts of your armor you can side scrape okay in it but it does just have a few very flat easy to pen parts of its armor that that make it quite vulnerable if people know where to shoot you but it kind of makes up for that by having this very nice amount of DPM, has a very nice rate of fire, and a very tasty gun with this long 88, the top gun that you get on the Tiger 1. So we're just playing up in these bushes. It's somewhere I come quite a lot on Red Shear. I don't normally stay here for this long in the battle, but um, it just kind of ended up feeling like the right place to stay. There was lots of stuff going on. The battle was pretty even, and there were some tier 9s I was trying to chip away at. Didn't really want to engage anyone close up. There we go, nice little snapshot on the enemy hammer there. And the reason I normally go, um, or often go to this part, see we managed to uh, bounce a little shot on the front there. Um, yes, the reason I often come here on Red Shear is because it's quite easy to move to either side of the battlefield from here. Normally I'll drive up here almost regardless of what tank I'm in, unless maybe I'm a top tier heavy and then I'll be off over in the uh, the valley on the east side. But uh, I'll drive up here, see where the other team sets themselves out and where my team goes and then move off and back up the relevant flank as appropriate. There we go, another hit into the uh, WZ. But yeah, very capable of, um, of bouncing quite a lot of shots to the Tiger. I've, um, I've got pretty good at, at side scraping in that to, to bait shots from the enemy. I had a round yesterday where I think I bounced about 3k damage. Just side scraping out from rock. It's difficult to fire back when you're side scraping without getting hit. That's the uh, that's the trick, but you can uh, because of that big flat bit on the front. If you pull out enough to fire your gun, then you're going to be showing some of that. So if they know where to hit you and they manage to do it, you're probably going to get penned. But if you just angle yourself nicely and side scrape out from behind a rock or a building, I was doing it on a rock yesterday, uh, then you we've got a little narrow shot on the leopard here we're going to go for. Nice. Uh, but yeah, you can make that work for you very well. And um, and your enemies will bounce. And if they're silly and they keep firing, they'll fire and bounce. And then once they've fired and bounced, you can pop out and calmly take your shot. And they can just frustratingly sit there while they're reloading. And they can't shoot you in the nice soft and squishy bits. Speaking of soft and squishy bits, there's uh, someone going through one of them right now. So I've moved over a bit. I've realized we're sort of swarming them over this area now. So I need to shuffle around to keep getting the damage done. Try and put a hit into the enemy tiger there. But we managed to track him. But presumably he's still there. He was quite damaged. Repair kit's probably already used. And there we go. The blind shot manages to take him down. So shuffle forward. There's the WZ. You finish him off nice and cleanly. And you can see that it does... I did notice it feeling slower than the tiger. But it wasn't, it wasn't painful. It wasn't awful to use. So... Um, so too, not too much of a disadvantage. It's really, I really like the idea of have, just having a premium tiger, really. That even though it is kind of pretty much the same as the normal tiger, just having a, a premium tiger is kind of cool. Because I really like using the tiger. So if I've got a premium one I can use, then that's awesome. It means I can grind out a ton of silver on PlayStation, which I badly need. It means I can grind out crews on PlayStation, which I really need. So yeah, it's very cool. I'm not sure how much I'll use it on... Um, Xbox once I unlock it we'll see but I'm going to uh, I'm going to go through the ops on Xbox and uh, we'll see how we get on with that so we managed to uh, stop the T29 in place I'm not really sure where that shot there went it didn't it looked like it bounced but um which is kind of surprising for where it hit but there you go that's why the tanks we managed to get him out of the way in the end and we just have the leopard PTA left to uh, to go for a nice little snapshot into him had a few people in the comments recently questioning the use of uh, using auto-aim. I'm not 
entirely sure why, because there's plenty of situations in which auto-aim is a very much legitimate strategy for doing well in battles, as I think fairly well demonstrated there. And there we go, we made 127 grand. I think there were a couple of ops given as a boost to that, but we'll scroll through those and have a look in a sec. We got 3,287 damage, pretty nice amount of damage for a tier 7. Nothing too crazy, but pretty decent. I think in the Tiger 1, I think I maybe got up to, I think 4.5, 5k was probably about the most damage I've done in that. So I have done quite a bit more than that. But um, but hopefully, I, while I'm going crazy playing this tank over the next few weeks, I'll get some really good games and we'll... um. I'll bring you some of those better replays as and when they pop up. So here we go, here are the ops that we've got. We've got the Hammer Ace Op was one that I actually unlocked there. We've got the Drop the Hammer, that was me getting what a large first aid kit from that Drop the Hammer Op. And there's the in detail results. We've got nearly 1800 base XP, which is pretty respectable, and four kills. So there you go, that's the, uh, that's the Tiger Hammer. I hope you guys found that entertaining, useful, or something along those lines. Uh, if you did, please think about hitting the like button. Or, um, or you know, don't, it's fine. Who cares, really? It'll be fine. Nice one. All right, so um, I've got the Jag Panzer thing as well. I'm going to try and get some good games of that for you guys soon. Hopefully, we'll get one of those out this weekend, maybe. I'm sure some of you will be interested to see that. Nice one. All right, wicked. Nice one. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all have a lovely weekend, and I will speak to you soon. Mm -hmm.